so welcome everyone i think let's start i don't know who else uh, may be joining or not so i'll put uh, as always the vows on the screen and let us one by one uh, since we are few of us it will be nice if one by one we all go over these lines for our own selves and others so anyone who feels ready to go first yeah i can read yeah please go ahead may i be a guard for those who need protection a guide for those on the path a boat a raft a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood may i be a lamp in the darkness a resting place for the weary a healing medicine for all who are sick a vase of plenty a tree of miracles and for the boundless multitudes of living beings may i bring sustenance and awakening enduring like the earth and sky until all beings are freed from sorrow and all are awakened thank you so much jai shri ji yeah anyone who wants to go next taru or swapna Uh, may i be a guard for those who need protection a guide for those on the path a boat a raft a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood a lamp in the darkness a resting place for the weary a healing medicine for all who are sick a vase of plenty a tree of miracles and for the boundless multitudes of living beings may i bring sustenance and awakening enduring like the earth and the sky until all beings are free from sorrow and all are awakened thank you so much sapna would you like to uh, go through the lines yeah sure May I be a guard for those who need protection, a guide for those on the path, a boat, a raft, a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood. May I be a lamp in the darkness, a resting place for the weary, a healing medicine for all who are sick, a vase of plenty, a tree of miracles. and for the boundless multitudes of living beings may i bring sustenance and awakening enduring like the earth and sky until all beings are freed are freed from sorrow and all are awakened thank you so much so i think there is something very special about whenever we go about reading these lines and it suddenly makes sense that if i am sick all the time uh, how can i be a healing medicine if i am weary myself all the time how can i be a resting place so it's not that i have not been weary i had been weary i have been sick i have been there done that but now do i feel ready to be something else knowing that there is much suffering knowing that each each one of us has some or the other struggle going on in life so if now i am ready i think then i'll have to keep my own unfulfilled endless demands at the side yeah so again yeah it's very nice to go over these again so thank you everyone shweta we were just going through one by one uh, through these lines would you like to read it for yourself also yeah 
Yeah. Okay, Monica. Yeah. I just try. Yeah. yeah. May I be a guard for those who need protection? A guide for those on the path? A boat? A raft? A bridge for those who wish to cross the flood? May I be a lamp in the darkness, a resting place for the weary, a healing medicine for all who are sick, a wars of plenty, a tree of miracles, and for the boundless multitudes of living beings, may I bring sustenance and awakening, enduring like the earth and sky, until all beings are freed from sorrow and all are awakened. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, uh, Sham and Krishan, we were just uh, for one by one, we were reading these vows for our own selves. So, if you would like to read, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, the screen is not coming actually. Screen is not coming. Um, I'm, I'm in fault with my system only. Okay, okay. So, shall uh, I put in the chat? Uh, no, 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 probably I will, what do you call, I will log in with my mobile just for long. Okay, okay. Krish, uh, you would like to go through these vows? Yes, fine. From the top? Yeah, from the top, yes. Okay. Um, may I be a guard for those who need protection, a guide for those on the path, a boat, a raft, a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood. May I be a lamp in the darkness, a resting place for the weary, uh, a healing medicine for all who are sick, a vase of plenty, a tree of miracles, and for the boundless multitudes of living beings, may I bring sustenance and awakening, enduring like the earth and sky, until all beings are freed from sorrow and all are awakened. Yeah, thank you so much. So we'll go through again the Next verses, training the mind, uh, Lord Atisha's verses on training the mind. So again, as we do every time, uh, just for our own remembrance and not to forget, uh, let us go through these one by one. So yeah, anyone who feels ready can maybe read this much, uh, the highlighted part. Okay. The Supreme. Oh. Sorry. You go ahead. Yeah, Swapna, go ahead. Taru can go next. The Supreme Understanding is to realize the meaning of selflessness. Supreme spiritual discipline is to tame one's own mind. The Supreme Great Quality is altruism. The Supreme oral instruction is to observe the mind at all times. The supreme remedy is to know that nothing has self nature. The supreme conduct is to be in disharmony with the world. Thank you, Swapna. So Taru, if you can read the next bit. Yeah, the supreme accomplishment is a continuous decrease of disturbing emotions. The supreme sign of accomplishment is a okay, sorry, is, is a continuous decrease of wishes and wants. The supreme generosity is non-attachment. The supreme ethical conduct is to pacify one's mind. The supreme patience is to take the lowest place. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so anyone who feels ready to go next? Yeah, I'll read. The supreme effort is letting go of activity. The supreme concentration is not altering the mind. 
the supreme wisdom is to not grasp onto anything as the self the supreme spiritual teacher is the one who exposes our hidden flaws and the supreme instruction is the one that helps us to strike at those flaws yeah thank you and the last bit anyone who feels like going with the last bit okay uh, the supreme companions are mindfulness and alertness the supreme inspiration is enemies hindrances disease and suffering the supreme method is to be natural the supreme way of benefiting is to help others enter the dharma the supreme benefit is a mind that turns towards the dharma yeah thank you so much thank you everyone so today we are uh, we finished uh, touching upon again just touching upon uh, the verse 9 the supreme generosity is non attachment so this we had already touched upon in the last session last did not happen so before that and we often talk about being generous you know uh, and here they say that if you really really want to be generous be non attached be non sticky so i think it's a beautiful reflection for all of us that we are all we keep sticking and if now i want to let go of that habit of mine can i move forward as a non sticky creature wherever i go also non sticky to situations non sticking to our own opinions and ideas in our head which usually we are blinded to so again it's a stickiness inward and it's a stickiness outward if we can take care of that that's what is supreme generosity according to lord atisha and today we are going to touch upon the supreme ethical conduct is to pacify one's mind so uh, in this teaching uh, jatsunma tenzing palmo she first shared about uh, ethical conduct because in buddhism there are many ethical conducts so ethical conduct in speech to have responsible speech ethical sexual conduct they talk about you know morality uh, so uh, not stealing for example so they talk about ethical conducts in such a way also so jatsunma first shares about how in buddhism we generally talk about ethical conducts and then she shares about what lord atisha is sharing here so we will be almost jumping directly to uh, what lord atisha wants to say here that what is really the supreme ethical conduct so i'm going to play the teaching and then we we'll listen to it and later on have reflections yes so uh, so she is just ending the general introduction of ethical conducts how we take uh, in buddhism and then she says what is lord atisha saying about the supreme ethical conduct so again we need to be responsible for our speech and then lastly in these precepts uh, to uh keep the mind clear so therefore also the avoidance of alcohol drugs anything which will um influence the mind because as we all know uh so much um abuse and crime and and destruction is caused through um people being under the influence of alcohol and drugs we all know this so these are the basic precepts and when buddhists hear ethics they think of these precepts but atisha says the supreme ethical conduct is to pacify one's mind so these precepts are dealing with our body our actions and our speech but atisha pushes all that aside and goes to the very point which is our mind why 
do we steal? Why do we destroy life? Why do we uh, lie or utter abusive speech? Why are we sexually abusive to others or make use of others for our own satisfaction? Why? Because of our mental intention and the negative emotions which disturb our mind. The body is not going to act if the mind doesn't tell it to. We are not going to say a word if the mind has not the intention to speak. So therefore, how our actions and speech develop depends on the mind, the, the instructions ga gathered from the mind. Everything which we say and do has an intention behind it. It might be so quick that we don't notice it, but it's always there. And so also the Buddha said that karma is intention. It's not what we do, but it's why we do it. What are the mental underpinnings of that action? Are they conjoined with uh, greed, anger, ignorance, jealousy, and so forth? Or with kindness, generosity, compassion, and so forth. So the underlying intentions in the mind are what create the karma, not just the action itself. And so therefore, if we have a peaceful mind, a calm, peaceful mind, then we will not act unethically. People who are angry, people who do bad things, people who create problems for others do not have peaceful minds. I mean, they do not. And because of their own inner disturbance, they therefore act outwardly to cause problems for other people. But people whose minds are settled and centered and peaceful, they were, their actions, their speech will also be peaceful. So if we really want to lead a perfectly ethical life, again, it comes back to the mind. It's not a matter of constraint and restraint. And of course, even the precepts, they are not commandments. They are called actually rules of training. We are training ourselves to live as a perfected being would live. As someone who is genuinely spiritual advanced would never dream of taking the life of others, would never dream of, of taking what is not given and so forth. That wouldn't come into their mind to do such a thing. So therefore, these precepts are helping us to, con to act as if we were enlightened, as if we really were spiritual beings. So therefore, the basis of this, again, is on having a peaceful mind. If our mind is peaceful, as I say, our actions will be peaceful, our speech will be peaceful, without a sense of being held tight. Like, you know, in the, in the olden days, people used to wear, women used to wear these, um, these corsets, you know, in order to get the right shape. And I how the, that's why they were always fainting all over the place. I mean, they could hardly breathe, right? And they were constrained. Of course, they looked beautiful. Perfect figure, everyone to admire. But, I mean, oh, the minute they got home, I'm sure they unlaced the whole thing. Went, oh. So our spiritual discipline should not be like that. It shouldn't be something which constrains us what we really want to do and then we have to stop ourselves because Guruji says don't. It should come from inside 
us that we naturally don't even want to do these things. Why would we want to take the life of another being? Why would we want to abuse others in, in order to gain our own satisfaction? We wouldn't want to. But that comes from having a mind which is settled and peaceful. A peaceful mind brings a peaceful world. I mean, obviously, if everybody's mind was peaceful, we wouldn't have the world we have. And even if everyone kept these five precepts, then we wouldn't have the world we have. Even the Buddhist world. So it all comes back again to the mind. The mind is the key. If the mind is centered and conscious and aware and peaceful, and clear, then the body and the speech just naturally flow from that. Of course. How could they not? Yeah, so anything anyone wants to share here, whatever we heard, any insights, reflections, doubts? Okay, so in case there is nothing at this, yeah, Sham, you have something? Yeah, uh, what I'm able to relate it to is that almost all the teachers and masters, they have all said that it is all a mental concept. Mm -hmm. Our thoughts and actions, for our action, our thoughts precedes the actions. First we conceptualize something and then we act accordingly to it. Like Swami Shivananda also says that Maya works havoc through the imagination of mind. For example, he gives the example also that sugar is not sweet, but the imagination is sweet. Because right from very formative years of our life, we are told that sugar tastes sweet. So that is one thing. Another, he says that, uh, what do you call? We can understand the nature of Maya and uh, the mind and become, uh, we can understand this nature of Maya and mind and we can become wiser and wiser with each passing day. Only if we start curbing this imagination by right thinking and by, what do you call? By constant vichar. By vichar, he means that we should argue in, in ourselves that what I'm doing, is it right for the society, is it right for the larger good and all that? So this is say that the mind is the springboard of behavior and we can, we can, what do you call, we can destroy this Maya through Vichar and Vivek Shakti, what he talks about in his books. Yes, yes, yeah. Thank you for sharing, yes. And I think if we look at our minds in day-to-day -day observations, we will see that no matter how many years we have been on this path, uh, the mind really badly needs uh, some kind of a right direction and also taming because there are so many undercurrents, ill will going on uh, and negative patterns going on, especially negative ones that we don't get to realize we are so blinded unless somebody points us out you know uh, so that's why kabir ji would say that keep your people who are critical to you around you because unless somebody points out we are so blinded by our patterns that we don't get to know and it's good to have friends around who can kindly gently you know take us forward in the right direction also pointing at the weaknesses as it was shared in one of the you know in one of the verses it was shared that uh, a teacher, supreme teacher is one who tells you about your flaws and the next is the ones then, you know, how to strike at those flaws. So not only just commenting on the weaknesses, knowing the weakness, recognize our weakness, and then to transform that weakness into something uh, empowering. So if, but if I don't become conscious of that weakness or, you know, whatever imperfections all of us have, 
if i don't become conscious of it and if i keep defending all those weaknesses then there is no chance it's only when it it is shed in the light of consciousness it is seen that yes there is something imperfect and i would like to work upon it then we can transmute it with love so yeah yeah anything here anyone else so if there is not anything at this yeah, okay, sorry. okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, was re I was reading a book uh, called The Fall of the Human Intellect, and it's a Vedanta book. But they also say, they emphasize about the buddhi, which is, which um, is our intellect, well, it's our reasoning faculty, our wise decision maker, if you want to call it. And it's about strengthening that. So the mind is a desirous creature. <laughs> and um, they, the buddhi, the intellect, are like the banks of the river. So it's that it's that voice that say for example when you when you yearn for food or you know you want two or three slices of the pizza but it's that voice that says you know stop at two but the mind wants three or four so that voice that inner compulsion that the the intellect kind of overrides the mind if you have a strong intellect the intellect will override the mind but if you have a weak intellect the mind will always uh, take over absolutely yeah so Sri Aurobindo also you know talks about this how reason has to be uh, more important or more in function as you said reason or intellect than uh, our impulses you know, our uh, just like you know vital desires or impulses and then he says even after long time walking in the light of reason even that has to be transcended so reason is the helper he says and then he says reason is the bar it's like you know once we have traveled enough with reason then it's time to then let go of the reason because the divine doesn't move only according to the reason he says which is very interesting yes i like that the reason is the help and, and reason yeah, the yeah 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 <laughs> so i thought uh, Yes, uh, Krish, if you have anything, please go ahead. Uh, I'm just going ahead since nobody was speaking. Yeah, please. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, you muted. If you're saying anything, you're muted. No, it's okay. You go ahead. That's fine. Thanks. So I thought that since we were talking about pacifying our mind uh, today, we can also go over another teaching, which is about uh, looking at the mind, you know, how our regular, ordinary human mind is and what we have to, you know, take it forward to. So I thought we'll share, uh, listen to this small teaching again, and then we can open up again for reflections. Um, yeah, maybe this one. So who are we? The whole of Buddhist practice is designed, as I say, like the GPS, you know, enlightenment for the sake of all beings. What does enlightenment mean? Means to wake up and abide in our essential nature, which is our Buddha nature. The reason why wisdom and compassion are so closely aligned is because the clearer that we see how things really are, the greater the compassion because nobody knows that. How sad. All the time we're Buddhas and we don't even know. We think we're who we think we are. And so we suffer. And we cause suffering to others. And we mess everything up. Because we don't know. 
And so the clearer those great masters see this, the greater their love and compassion for us all. It's not just about having you know, compassion for sad little puppies. It, it's about seeing the whole condition and how we want so much to be happy. And but because of our delusion, we create so much suffering for ourselves and for others. And that's terribly sad. We are just caught up in our delusion. So, mostly, people, all of us, are living at the very surface of our mind. Right? We are living on the waves of the ocean. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Very surface, caught always in our chatter, 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 endless, like having a television on that you can never turn off in your head. You know, endlessly going on all the commercials and all the endless soap operas and all the, you know, all nonsense that's on anybody's television. It's all in our head. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the sad bits <laughs> and the happy bits <laughs> and all the memories and all the hopes and fears, blah, 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 blah. Can't turn it off. But there's another level, our mindfulness. The ability to observe that without being drawn into it, right? So in the shamatha practice and in the vipassana practices, we're honing that skill to be able to observe and witness the mind without being drawn into the mind. Just seeing thoughts and emotions as thoughts and emotions, not me, not mine, just. So that's already a huge step forward, right? We had the, the chattery TV mind, it's just the gross mind. And there is the ability to observe that which is a more subtle level of mind, mindfulness, right? Nowadays, mindfulness is the big thing, right? and it's good. I mean, you know, people say, people, ordinary people shouldn't be taught mindfulness because not they don't know it's Buddhist. Who cares? If we are able to help people to disassociate skillfully from their, their thoughts and their emotions and just to recognize thoughts and emotions as just thoughts and emotions, so that we are more in control of our mind instead of being controlled by our mind, then that's a good thing. Even just that. I mean, the, the, the ego, which is the conceptual thinking mind, is a terrible master, but it's a good servant. We're not trying to stop thinking. Thinking is a brilliant thing. We're not trying to end up blank. But we should be in control of the mind rather than controlled by it. Then, if we are in control of our mind, then it's a wonderful tool. But as long as the mind itself with the ego is in control, then we are enslaved, and by a very pitiless master. Anyway. Yeah, anything, anyone? Yeah, Monica, you know, one of the things that my mind goes to is it's right about if the mind is quiet, then there wouldn't be a need for violence or for even getting angry, for example. Yet it seems I was just contemplating for the last few minutes 
it's like a, a, a wave of anger can come up or, or feeling insulted or just something that the ego can do can come up so fast that it becomes impossible to keep the mind quiet. You know, if there was control of the mind and there was quietude in the mind, then it wouldn't need to express itself. But in those moments when the reaction is so fast or the vital has got the better of things, um, and the speed of that, how challenging it is in those moments to keep the mind still or keep that reason that we even touched on before this last video, you know, to, to have the reason come alive or, or be at the forefront, any of that. Um, yeah, and, and I think that I was wondering, well, what, what, what is the way through that? And the best it seemed is when that initial wave or sense feeling in the body comes up that I'm about to get angry in this situation, then to catch it there. Right, but it's not always easy. Sometimes even that initial impulse of, okay, it's time to really calm down or leave the room till I'm calm or something like that can be overlooked, you know? And then the mind is not at all quiet. So it's, uh, it, it isn't as easy as I think in all situations. Absolutely. I think who said it was easy anyway? <laughs> so it's not easy, absolutely. And uh, that's the reason that we practice because it's not natural and if you read you know go through how mother shares about the story of creation again and again it becomes clearer for us that that's how the things are right now but they don't have to be like that always and forever so yes a light turned to darkness that's why we have the darkness of the ego with us and now we have this divine presence in us, the light of consciousness, which can see that this is not right. When I follow the dictates of disturbing emotions like anger, hate, blame, you know, victimization, all these, whatever disturbs me, whenever I follow their dictates, I land up suffering, I end up, you know, making others suffer around me. So if we have suffered enough then we will be convinced to practice and if we have made others suffer enough around us otherwise there is no hope the only hope is that have you suffered enough you know have you uh, followed the dictates of these disturbing ripples enough if you have then the next type even if a very strong impulse is arising then you will be confused that no 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 not this time again now i am not listening to this dictate so slowly, 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 this conviction comes. Uh, the more we suffer and the more our families and loved ones suffer because of our impulses, the more we get convinced that enough, you know, now it cannot be uh, in the hands of ego anymore. And it's hard, why it's hard? Because these patterns are running not even from childhood in this life. They are running since lifetimes ego patterns, you know, the way we react, the way we think, the way we feel about any situation. If a person said something, the mind always goes into one track. So these tracks are like, they're like grooves. You know? So our, as if the train is set in those grooves, because we are running over these grooves since ages. But now if we have suffered enough, then we will be convinced that no, no matter how hard it is, it will be discomforting, no doubt. Uh, getting out of a groove is always discomforting. But also look at the discomfort we cause to ourselves and others when we follow the dictates of these patterns. That's even more discomforting. So why not go through this discomfort? Anyway, there is discomfort. Either there is discomfort of going through anger and facing the you know uh, result of it. That's also painful discomfort and or when the anger is arising although it's very hard to stop myself at the moment but if i am convinced fully that no this is not the right way then i will be pushed and self-motivated to practice that's why suffering comes as a disguise blessing blessing in disguise But if a part of me is 
still wanting something through that anger and i am not yet admitting that no 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 i know that uh, you know I, I know that if i act the anger out something i will get so if a part of me is still wanting something from the situation by being angry then uh, i am actually on the one can say the enemy side so then there is no one to blame but myself not saying that blame helps <laughs> but i am myself responsible for the situation yeah. would that make sense swapna yeah no it's true and the definitely the feeling sick of um like being disgusted with oneself and seeing that exactly that follow to follow through that's a good reminder you know to see that when one follows through with an impulse such as anger then the suffering it causes so yeah um absolutely and it's kind of having patience exactly not getting upset at oneself <laughs> when it seems to be taking longer than than one would like but yeah thank you yeah makes sense And also you know we can use make use of these opportunities when we are ourselves feeling so helpless by the patterns that we carry we are just following their dictates and feeling really overwhelmed we can tune in with that pain that we feel of being helpless and overridden by patterns and connect with all those you know all of us go through such helplessness when we are wanting to transcend our egoistic states and we suffer so connecting with the pain of humanity you know it's a collective pain that we carry so also i think we can open our hearts that i am not the only one who suffers so many of me infinite number of beings suffer just like how i am suffering right now this is how miserable one can get if one follows the dictates and that's why the motivation arises uh, the motivation that we were talking of in the beginning you know the motivation of a bodhicitta or a bodhisattva you know, that who says that now enough of my own unfulfilled demands and you know expectations i am not going to now follow their dictates i am going to walk the path of enlightenment not only for myself but to benefit all others around me because i know that we suffer if we follow the dictates of the ego state then the motivation arises true motivation so we can make use of these uh, opportunities when we ourselves are feeling totally you know on our knees and then the intense call goes to the divine these are the phases which we have to make use of so thank you for sharing yes. yeah anything else anyone yeah i had i mean first of all with this verses you know the first thing is it's so surprising when you read them again and again also it's again surprising because it's so contradictory to everything you have been taught right like all the ways of your life it's very weird how opposite they are and how they hit you and so many things like again from the talk also but just a few things to keep it short like about ego you know one thing i that really helped me was that you know reading that ego doesn't even care about your personal well being you know how we feel that my ego is there to protect me to save me to help me to be somebody but i had read you know and it's very true that even at the cost of your life if ego can be saved it will kill you so I mean that was quite an awakening for me personally and that helps me with what you were just sharing you know that how one when one sees what suffering one is causing or where is this particular thing leading to you know to realize the extent of the situation or the truth of the situation because i would say just talking about again my life that nine out of 10 issues are there because i don't see things in totality like if say you know if i if somebody talk about a pizza slice right like right now i see that okay i something in me wants to have another slice but what would that mean to me i don't go there 
if i have to eat non vegetarian food you know j- just for people who eat it you know it's just like it's too overwhelming not to you know it's just too much desire is there it doesn't i don't see that what is this happening you know what am i doing i don't go there all the things like you know they she was talking about that how i don't know what how much misery your actions are causing others also you know and that time also it's just about what am i getting right now right now right it's not about what is it leading to some at some point of time we'll have to have to ask these questions which nobody wants to ask right but one has to and then when you start seeing things in totality okay this is leading to this so you would still do it 10 more times 20 more times but maybe there would be a time and there is right when one feels that you know no i don't think so so this is also a process like first we didn't even know then you know you don't want to believe then you not wantingly start seeing it right and then you know you are like okay i'm doing it but i shouldn't be doing that and how the whole uh thing is there but one thing you know i kind of a little bit confuses me like you know when she was saying that don't do it just because your guru said so it has to be from within right and yet i have see, i have felt i have seen that at times one has to put a tight stop you know that no i'm so sorry no i mean so that also feels like i just know this yeah i think so as they say truth is not a formula so absolutely you know, what you were sharing that we can't make it a formula because at times uh, maybe we don't understand and yet the guru did say that stop it and i would have to stop it you know so it will come naturally that no i i know that i don't know the reason but i need to stop it you know so again at times the, the discernment will work and at times without any logic without any reason one has to put a stop to it as you were sharing yes and just to complete it you know there is this inherent tendency to be right or to be proved you know proven right or you know just to be re- recognized that okay you could be right but i'm just a little bit more right you know that thing and how we were reading that you know those uh, Uh, transformation of thoughts in that when it said that except defeat that was again so opposite so contrary to how we operate but so liberating so just you know these lines even reading them without even wanting to adopt them they trigger something they light a small flame right which has the tendency to become a fire and burn the whole thing it's yeah it's really nice to see them again and again even though it they would mean nothing <laughs> so yeah thank you thank you for sharing yes. you know, there is a kabir's uh, a song actually on what you were sharing that uh, the ego would not care it would eat you up for its unfulfilled desires and demands which are never ending so in that uh, kabir ji says uh, it's a song actually it's four five line song hirna samaj bujh ban charna so he says oh dear you know referring to the soul he says uh, right now referring to the soul then later on he uses dears for the senses so he says be very careful as you graze through this forest he says don't go in the fir- ni ek ban charna so the in the first forest you can go you know okay you go duja ban charna in the second forest also you go tije ban pag nahi dharna so he says then the third forest don't even enter and why not even enter he says in the next line tohe mar tora mas bikave so he says that there hunters are there lined up like a deer is there the deer of senses he goes in the forest of thought he says hunters are there and they would kill you they would take away your skin and they will sell it away so that's the task of ego and again sri aurobindo says about reason reason is the helper reason is the bar he also says ego is the helper ego is the bar so if we go deeper into it 
from an amorphous mass of collectivity i don't know who i am what i think what i believe in there the ego rises us up you know it kind of helps us to get collected and in gathered that okay this is all i what i want rest maybe others are wanting but that's not what i want so there is a collect individuality developing out of that amorphous collectivity so that's the initial task of ego but as we mature as human beings and all of us right now here you know our ages our experiences we are ripening and you know maturing as human beings now the ego has no use at all so now if we still follow the dictates and patterns of these ripples and you know all these negative ones that keeps on coming up and unfulfilled abysmal you know abyssal desires and demands which are not going to finish if we still follow then we fall in trouble then we fall in trouble because now it's a bar now it will eat us up and that's why suffering so suffering is a beautiful indicator that so long as i walk the path of ego when now the ego is not required i am ready to move towards my true genuine individuality each one is granted with now if i walk still the boat of ego i will suffer i will suffer and suffering is just an indicator don't walk that path turn within go within let the unfulfilled desires remain unfulfilled unfulfilled as mother says offer yourself to something higher each one of us has unique combinations of potentialities you know skills abilities that is what we have to now offer to the world you know in whatever little capacity we can offer and not caring about any appreciation not caring about any fame name respect nothing why do i want to do this work because i know this is important and beneficial to others and myself that's why i want to do so there is a self motivation so towards the end uh, i thought uh, still some time uh, towards the end i can actually sing this one with this, uh, this one that i was referring to heerna samaj booj bancharna but before that we can take up more reflections so if anyone has please go ahead Yeah, Monica. Thanks for this reminder of you know, like, say, I use my example of getting angry. Um, the reminder about if I'm doing it not just for myself, you know, I've thought about it sometimes from a larger point of uh, view. In the sense, for example, if I have a tendency um, to desire something or or base my sense of of identity on something, um, such as uh being in a relationship or a position in society i've thought if i overcome that then somehow it serves uh a larger whole cuz a lot of people can have their identity based on something whether it's relationship or a job or status so if i overcome a tendency of identity like that that's something helpful for the world but i'd never stop to think well just a simple case of not getting angry is also that I somehow had overlooked that it had seemed so personal that I it was easy for the mind to just go well it's just about me and my situation um so kind of almost like inverse ego um but to make this link now of like oh actually the next time to step away from an argument or anger is not just for me and not just to keep harmony in my little personal situation or in my home but actually it's a huge thing um in terms of if every home was able to keep peace and avoid disturbance uh that would mean a lot you know i i somehow had made that link so thank you beautiful. yeah beautiful yes and mother says that if we overcome one desire right now talking of desire she says if we overcome one desire 
it actually creates a ripple in the world of desire uh, through which all the desires come to us so you have made one progress in your personal little individual life and we don't even know that it is created a ripple and somebody else would be benefited because of my overcoming a desire and same with anger and other things because these are just coming from a collective they are not true to our nature that's why they are called negative or disturbing emotions because they are not essential part of our being they disturb us they make us uneasy so uh, mother says that no that a desire is not my desire there is nothing personal about my desire it's a collective world of desire through which you suck as if you you know uh, cling to something and you think that it's my own desire so that's really beautiful uh, what you were sharing that uh, it's not my personal victory it's actually making you know you are actually a social responsibility working with our own selves yes. yeah anyone else i'm just getting my copy You know, about this, I know we have heard it a lot of times, but like very like lately, there was a video of Thai, like Krishna Khan, that I was watching, and in that he was talking about a young man who was, uh, you know, who had issues with his father because his father had a lot of anger. You know, while growing up, he felt it wasn't nice that his father was so angry. and then he had a little sister like he must be around 14 15 he got a little sister and he he the first time he got angry at the sister he realized in great shock that oh my god it's in me too and then he you know could see it and he could relate that why his father would be angry and what does it do to you and so instead of accepting it like most of us do that oh it came and it will go he just you know got focused that okay this is something i must work on and remove from you know within me because if i remove it it will be removed from our you know like the whole thing like it would help my father it would help my sister and so so on so you know and then how he included his father too in his quest for working on anger and he was able to kind of work with it so just that you know when we go through something like sapna was saying it feels personal but you know like they say there is no other but uh, you know and it's like not this similarly there's nothing personal like if i do something for me thinking that okay i am overcoming something or i am able to do better at that that's like helping so much more and it's as if you know in the genetics of the family something gets released that that trait will not be passed on i mean it's so amazing you know thank you very true very true yes 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 sham yeah again i am able to say that ego is the enemy that shows that how we can be humble in our aspirations and gracious in our success and when we feel we can really take a step backward and be resilient so this i have seen in my life too and it is always an inspiring and timely reminder that humility and confidence are still our greatest friends when confronting the challenges of ego or culture or our bringing or our conditioning or anything of that sort what taru was pointing at yeah thank you sham okay so any last comments anyone any reflections okay so uh, i'll shortly uh, share this song with all of us if anyone wants to leave they can leave and if you want to stay you're welcome to stay we got subtitles sorry <laughs> sub you know i'll i'll actually go through the english translation first and then sing the song that's a good idea so it's uh, in hindi it's heerna samaj booj ban charna oh dear be careful when you graze 
एक बन चरना दूजे बन चरना तीजे बन पग नहीं धरना सो ही सेज यू गो टू द फर्स्ट फॉरेस्ट गो टू द सेकेंड फॉरेस्ट बट डू नॉट एंटर द थर्ड फॉरेस्ट सो दे आर रेफरिंग टू द फर्स्ट फॉरेस्ट एज द स्पिरिचुअल रेल्म सो ही सेज गो देयर ग्रेज देयर इन सेकेंड फॉरेस्ट इज रेफर टू एज द माइंड और इंटेलेक्ट एज रीजन वी वर टॉकिंग ऑफ बुद्धि the third forest is the physical reality of senses sense perceptions opinions interpretations you know all that coming from there so there he says do not enter that senses ha huh? then he says tije ban me panch paradhi paradhi means hunters and panch is referring to the senses so he says in the third forest there are five hunters उनके नजर नहीं पड़ना सो डोंट फॉल इन टू देयर साइट तोहे मार तेरो मास बिकवे सो यू यू विल बी किल्ड एंड दे विल सेल योर मीट एंड यू नो एंजॉय हैव फन दैट्स व्हाट यू आर शेयरिंग इन द बिगिनिंग दैट ईगो वुड नॉट केयर इवन इफ यू आर सोल्ड एंड यू नो सफरिंग तोहे मार तेरो मास बिकवे बिकवे मीन्स बेचना टू सेल इट आउट तेरे खाल का करेंगे बिछोना सो नॉट इवन सेलिंग इट आउट द रेस्ट ऑफ द पीस ऑफ स्किन दे विल एक्चुअली मेक यूज ऑफ एज देयर यू नो थिंग्स टू कवर देम सेल्व अप और टू स्प्रेड इट आउट लाइक अ शीट तेरे खाल का करेंगे बिछोना देन ही सेज टूवर्ड्स द एंड एज कबीर सेज इन एवरी लास्ट लाइन कहे कबीरा जो सुनो बई साधो गुरु के चरण चित धरना so if you want to stick stick to guru's feet he says and your attention awareness just rest the focus as guru's at guru's feet only that can take you over these forests so it is actually originally i got to know of these uh, song uh, this one specifically by kumar gandharv and krishnakant shukla so krishnakant shukla is i believe a disciple of kumar gandharv who developed his own style later and his rendition is what resonated with me so that's what i'm going to sing hirna 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 हीरना समझ बूझ बन चरना हीरना 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 समझ बूझ बन चरना हीरना एक बन चरना एक बन चरना दूजे बन चरना तीजे बन पग नहीं धरना हीरना हीरना समझ बूझ बन चरना हीरना हीरना तोहे मार तेरो मास बिकवे बिकवे तोहे मार तेरो मास बिकवे बिकवे तेरे खाल का तेरे खाल का करेंगे बिछोना हीरना 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 समझ बूझ बन चरना कहे कबीरा जो सुनो भाई साधो 
कहे कविराजो सुनो भाई साधो गुरु के चरण चित धरना हीरना 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 समझ बूझ बन चरना that's it it's uh, one of the songs which is uh, coming under the category of warning and that's why this a kind of a halloween <laughs> kind of a sound it has because it's chetavani ka ang so it's like warning that be very very careful be very vigilant otherwise you're gone <laughs> we has many songs in that category thank you for giving a listening ear Yeah, thank you for that. It was lovely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Sir. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So, thanks, Monica. Thanks for singing. Beautiful. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Bye.